Good evening. This is Wendy Downing, pastor of the Steelville Presbyterian Church. This is our annual Christmas Eve service, and the sermon title is Come, Shepherds, Come, based on Luke 2, 1 through 20. When you get to the end of the slides, there will be a communion service, so please uh, wait for that. Let us pray. When all has gone quiet and the world begins to sleep, tucked in and snug beneath a blanket of frost, when the universe holds its breath and angels begin to stretch their wings and stars begin to slide into constellations of hope, when music seems to hang in the air and creation hums its own carol about the longing for light and birth again from wintertime, then we waiting ones gather to listen to these rumors and whispers about the birth of a child, <clears throat> the child made all of light, and together pass the word that soon and very soon Advent will slip into sign and waiting into birth. So let us gather with ever-beating hearts, staying with Mary and Joseph, wondering, laboring, longing, expecting the promise to break through the night, let us hear what God is whispering to us this holy night. Amen. Our scripture for tonight comes from the second chapter of Luke, verses 1 through 20. In those days a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has, been, that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. May God add a blessing to the reading of the word. I would like to advocate that tonight we are all shepherds. Yes, you and me, we're all shepherds. That might not sound like a grand compliment once you think about it. Shepherds are loners. They have few friends, and their companions all day long just say, bah. Shepherds walk around with boots caked with sheep dip, and they don't smell like Christmas potpourri. Shepherds are the last to make it to any party or social scene because the animals keep them busy night and day. You and me, we're shepherds tonight. We are shepherds not because of the dirty boots or the loneliness or the lack of social status, but just for tonight, we are shepherds. Before, before my first child, Courtney, was born, there was much about Christmas that I did not know. When Courtney was a baby, I learned volumes about Christmas. The Bible did not reveal it all. 
I know now that Christmas night with no anesthesia, no doctor, no midwife was no silent night. It was most likely a night full of tears, pain, and labor. The Bible does not tell us if Joseph was yelling to Mary, breathe, just breathe. Birth pangs may have caused Mary to scream. Joseph may have been screaming prayers. The family who owned the house where the manger was located may have also been yelling. Only later, after baby Jesus was washed up, swaddled, and put to rest for the, his first drink, maybe then things quieted down. I speculate that Jesus cried a lot after that, too. Maybe Mary cried a lot, too. I bet Joseph cried, too. Holy night, it certainly was. But silent? I doubt it. The most amazing detail that Luke tells us about this birth, this human birth of labor and pushing and pain, is that after Mary gave birth to the baby, they put him in a feeding trough. That's what a manger is. It's not a cradle. It's where you put donkey chow or hay for the sheep. Every peasant house in Bethlehem had one. They all brought their livestock in for the night. That way the thieves or wolves would not steal the animals. The manger separated the family living area from the animal area. Into this room divider food box, Mary and Joseph placed the very Son of God. In the midst of true human struggle and strife, in the presence of blood and tears, in a place between people and animals, the lowly manger crib, God lets Jesus come down to earth. It is not incarnation into grandeur, but it is incarnation. Sure, it is a holy night, but it is not a quiet night. Outside in the hills, the shepherds watched over their flocks that were too large to herd inside any house. Nearby, but not close enough to hear Mary's labor or the baby's first wail, the shepherds missed most of the noise of the birth. They would have missed the whole event, just sitting there on the hills gazing at stars. Except a host of angels came to them and said, Go and find your hope. Go and find your dream. Put away your fear and go and find your joy. The long-expected one is here, and this is your sign. You'll find the newborn king, born into lowly estate, cradled in a feed box, resting his head on hay and wood. With noisy excitement, they clamored into the village of Bethlehem, looking for the sign from the angels. I don't think they tiptoed into town. They did not really know what to expect. They hardly could believe what, that God would lay his Messiah in a manger. But for some holy and heavenly reason, they rushed to town and looked for the baby, whose crying may have alerted them to the correct house. Tonight, we are all shepherds. For some holy and heavenly reason, we noisily came to look for our Savior. We entered this house of God, hoping to find the long-expected incarnation of God. We may not always know why we end up here on December 24th with candles glowing, faces smiling, and voices singing. What moved you, urged you, called you to come here this night? Was it tradition, family pressure, a deep sense of longing, just the thing to do, the beauty of it all? Or did you not particularly care to come tonight? It doesn't matter. We are all shepherds, something holy and heavenly, moved us to come and find the sign of our long-expected hope. We are all shepherds, noisily running with haste to find him once again. In our noisy haste to be here, see him and leave. Don't miss the sign. It's all about the sign. If we run looking for our hope and our joy and we forget the sign, we might run right past the Savior this time of year, the hustle and bustle can cause us to miss Jesus. The lights and the glitter, the temptations to spend and consume, sidetrack us. Some want to find God in a twinkling castle or a snowy dream. But don't forget the sign. It's all about the sign. 
God laid Jesus in a feed trough. There's our sign. God put Jesus in the manger, which is in the middle of the house. God laid Jesus in the midst of our house, in the middle of our blood, tears, and troubles. Christ comes to us tonight, not because so much gold and tinsel, but because of our great need and our great hunger for God. God incarnates Jesus right where we need him. God puts Jesus in our homes, into our noisy nights, and into the places where animals and humans live. This is God's way of introducing the world's hope and peace. God lays down Jesus wherever there is trouble and pain and noise. God calls people to come and look. Come and look at the hope this baby brings. Come and look at him grown and teaching us the ways of the kingdom. Come and look at Jesus crucified and found again between wood and blood and tears. Come and look at him raised and living, born anew into life itself so as to never die again. Come and look at the one who called us here, who claims us as his own, as a gift, and who knows we need God. Come and look for the Lord God who called us to this holy night. Like the shepherds, look for a sign from God. With the shepherds, we come to gaze upon Christ, born tonight, not into a lowly manger, but into lowly people. We gather as the church always to gaze upon Jesus as our gracious and merciful Lord. Into ordinary life, surrounded by ordinary people, God becomes incarnate. The night may be holy, yet it is filled with things as common as noise and clamor, bread and cup. God arrives right in the midst of our real trouble and tears, into our screams and yells, into our pain and hurt. God comes into the real world with a real Savior for real people. We are all shepherds tonight. Once we gaze upon Christ tonight, we, like the shepherds, will leave the house of God. Also, like shepherds, we will discover the change Jesus lays into our manger-like lives. Like shepherds, we find the joy and the hope and go and glorify God in our real-world fields of sheep dip and constant buying. What God gives us tonight is something holy and heavenly. It is Christ himself laid in our midst as God's own grace in the flesh. What comes upon us tonight is holy, but it isn't silent. Our shepherd-like response tonight and in the tomorrows we face is to find a moment, a way, a joy, and a hope with which to glorify God. Like the shepherds, we glorify God by doing our best job tending our sheep, helping our neighbor, using our gifts. And throughout it all, we keep singing the angel's song, Gloria in excelsis Deo, Glory to God in the highest. Tonight we are indeed all shepherds. Leave this place tonight, glorifying God for all you have seen and heard. Amen. It's Christmas Eve and it's time for a communion, so I hope you have your bread and juice at hand. Gathering around the table as we celebrate new life morning, we remember so many stories around tables, tables where bread is broken and the cup is poured out, where families gather and generations share, where stories are remembered and refined and reshaped. Gather around the table on this holy night, we remember the story of the sacred daring to share our life, the story of the holy donning human flesh and dwelling among us, a story that is at once both ethereal and earthly. Gathering around the table on this Christmas Eve night, we break the bread and we remember the paradox that it is in our brokenness that we become whole. We fill this cup and remember the abundance discovered in each new sharing of our sacred stories. 
Together around the table we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless the fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and our drinking, that our eyes might be opened, that we might recognize the Spirit rising in our midst, indeed in one another. Come, Holy Spirit, come. As the Holy Spirit fills us, let us remember the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his disciples. On the night before he died on the cross, Jesus had a meal of remembrance with his disciples. At the table, he took the bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup, the final cup of wine, and he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. Let us pray. We pray, God of love, that you will send your Holy Spirit upon us and what we do here, that we and these signs touched by your Spirit may be signs of life and love to each other and to all the world. Amen. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. May this holy night be a blessing to you and to your families. Amen.